speaking of being young, I remember <laughs> when I was it was just around the time Untouchables before Untouchables came out, and someone came in school. They're like, "Man, you gotta hear this this song here to stay." This guy named Michael Beinhorn produced it. You gotta hear it. I yeah. remember hearing that for the first time, and I was like, "Holy shit, man! That just blew my." It was so heavy, but heavy in like a different way. Not like I don't know how to describe it. You know, like those new metal records at the time. It was heavy, yeah. but it was it's it wasn't like that. It was like its own heaviness. That was that was my opinion yeah. of it. It was just so it was like a wall of sound, but it was oh man, that record sounds incredible, <laughs> like incredible, man. How Thank did you. how well, did you I'm, how I'm did happy you, that, sorry how did you get the drum sound so gonna, big? Um, well, first I was going to say I'm happy that you identified that it stood apart from all the other records of that For that sure. genre in that period because that was really consciously done. Like okay. That was something that I really, really made a tremendous effort to do. I mean, I, the thing is, is that from my perspective, it was never too hard to do something like that because I already knew how most people cut drums and cut, okay. you know, c- cut records like that. It's yeah. like you just put up a bunch of mics and you record it. You know, my approach was always specifically about trying to get a sound for each instrument that would really reflect who the performer was and that would be that it would happen in a way that was in such bold contrast to anything else that anyone else had heard and also i'd like to draw influences in from other places places where you wouldn't expect like i wasn't listening to other new metal records right because frankly i didn't think most of them sounded very good <laughs> no <laughs> you know my interest was more in like electronic music you know, so I felt that things like that had more relevance. I always liked the presence of samples on records and synthesizers. And I just felt that when people recorded guitars, you know, I mean, it was always the same thing. Like put a 57 up on a Marshall cab and you got the sound. Like, yeah, sure. I mean, that sounds good, but it doesn't sound as good as if you put up a couple of cabinets. You know, you spend time deciding which cabinets you're going to use, which amp heads you're going to use, which cables you know, mix and match, see what sounds better. And then select a different cabinet, see which speaker on each cabinet sounds good. 